Good afternoon, I'm Nigel Okins. I am the founder of Cocktail Magazine and the co-host of Cocktail Conversations. And I'm here in uh, Chiang Mai, uh, at the beautiful 137 Pillars Hotel, for this very special edition of Cocktail Conversations with Anne Arrowsmith, who's the GM. Good afternoon, Anne. Good afternoon, Nigel. Lovely to uh, spend time with you and to welcome you to the north. It's very kind of you. I'm, I, this is an absolutely gorgeous hotel. It's right in the heart of the town. It's got a very storied history, or the house has. Can you tell us a little tiny bit about the history of the house? Absolutely. Um, we're sitting in Jack Bain Bar, which is one component of a traditional Thai teak home. Um, its architecture is a combination of Lana, European, and a little bit of influence from Burma as well. Right. And it was built in 1889, and it was the home and the headquarters for um, a teak trading company known as the Borneo Company. So teak, obviously this is a beautiful teak house, right? right. But teak was um, an important component in the production of teak were the elephants that were used Absolutely. during that time. Um, they were working elephants. Um, the industry wouldn't have existed yeah. without elephants. Um, you know, it was it was hard work. And I just had a conversation actually with a historian, um, an English chap mm. called Graham Jeffcoat, and he's writing about the the hardships that that not just the Europeans but but the workers that were um, involved in harvesting the teak. Mm. I mean, it took. Number one, it was remote from Chiang Mai. Um, but number two, they'd have to ring the tree, which was effectively cutting a section out of it. And that tree would have to be left for two years oh my God. in order that it could dry out and die. Um, and then it would be dragged to the Ping River here. And it would take, again, perhaps another two years to get down to, to um, Bangkok. So it was hard work, it was dangerous work. And the only mechanism for moving these things was to use elephants. You know, I mentioned the elephants. The reason is I saw this beautiful little book right. in the room, which is um, the, the CSR partnership of the hotel with an elephant foundation in town could let, I saw from that lovely video that you, that you starred in as well. The sentiment has changed, right? And no longer, elephants are no longer seen on the streets of Bangkok, for example, with uh, you know, begging for money for their mahouts or their carers or whatever. Um, what, what, is, what, what led you to sort of support that foundation and, uh, and what is the hotel doing uh, with regards to CSR? Well, uh, you know, it's as you said uh, in, in the introduction, the, the house and this property, its history lies mm. in its association with working elephants. Um, so just as the preservation of this house was important to the Wampalette family who own the hotel, um, it was important to us as well to recognize that in the world that we live in, we humans are remarkably self-centered right. and, and, um, you know, and, and, and put ourselves in, in terms of priority, first, second, and third. Um, the number of elephants in this country has, has reduced to dangerous levels. Mm. Um, these are magnificent, intelligent animals. And the fact that Lek and you know, others within this area and, and other parts of Thailand you know, are doing the work that, that they're doing the hard work. Right. We, and, and my interest is to, to send as many of our guests as possible. Do, do many of your guests actually participate? Because there's an encouragement to do that in the, uh, in the program. Yeah, they, they do. Um, some of them come with their their time here mm. pre-organized right. um, but Elephant Nature Park would be probably on the top three right. lists of, of places if they're going to have an experience with elephants that they would go to and yeah. you know it's it's one that we, we allow our guests to have a choice as, as to what they want to do but we give them the reasons behind why we support that particular uh, well, the foundation. reason is as soon as you turn the TV on, right, you've got that lovely video <laughs> with you cycling along with the elephants oh. eating the uh, papaya or whatever yeah, it is that, out of the back. That was very, very it was special. It's so much fun, right? Yeah. I and mean, you were also involved with an orphanage, I believe, yeah. and yes, perhaps even more. I don't know. A um, couple of things. Yeah, the orphanage is something that um, certainly 
prior to COVID, we would go once per quarter. Um, there's a, a temple called Wat Don Chan, mm. um, which is quite close to us here, houses 500 plus orphans. Yeah. So we will take school supplies um, mm. and clothes and things that, you know, are perfectly decent, mm. um, but we can't use them any longer yeah. in the hotels. And there is such, there's such a good spirit in, in Chiang Mai that, that you, you know, you feel not obligated, you feel really enriched and privileged to be able to play a little well, bit you, of Well, you've worked in, in, in Bangkok most I, recently um, as well. Yes, I, I did. And I mean, COVID was devastating. The first year was not so bad because as we transited from 19 into 2020, yeah. um, COVID didn't really have the grand impact until about March. And at the same time, there were some changes um, with our sister property and our headquarters in Bangkok. And now we're sort of through COVID, fingers crossed. Are you seeing that you're getting the traffic back from both within Thailand and from overseas here at the hotel? This year, we've had the first quarter was supported essentially by domestic, which was good. Right. Um, and then end of May, so June, July and August were very good months for us. September, traditionally it's our worst month, um, but this month has been splendid. And last night we were 96% occupied. So one so room was empty. One room was empty, <laughs> That's it was. Pity, isn't it? Yeah, we, <laughs> damn it. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the food scene in, in Chiang Mai. I couldn't help noticing that there's Michelin signs everywhere. Uh, certainly, I think in our Thailand's favorite restaurants, we had you know, 15 or 20 restaurants from the north featured this year in the top list. And yeah. how are you going to position uh, 137 Pillars and all of that? Because you've definitely got some great food here. So right. are, you, are you going to kind of immerse yourself in in the Michelin world or the Thailand's favorite restaurants world or the 50 whatever's world? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we will and we'll sort of do it sequentially and quietly mm. because I think, you know, you, you need a number of elements playing in harmony, a bit like an orchestra right. at the same time. So. Um, we've got a very good local talent. Yeah, certainly in Bangkok, where I spend most of my time, you know, cock the cocktail scene there is just kind of, <laughs> it's gone nuts. You know, yes, everyone's yeah. talking about this, that, and the other cocktail bar. And we happen to be here in, is it Jack Bain's it's bar? It's Jack Bain's bar. You know, that's uh, that gentleman there. there. There's Jack. Is Jack. Smiling on us. Yes. Um, and uh, his mate over here, who's that? This is Lewis Leon Owens. Oh, he's famous, right? Well, he is. Um, Lewis's mother was perhaps more famous. Even more famous, yes. Um, was she, she was the teacher to King Rama IV. So, ah. and, and made There's famous some, some in the King There's incredible legends around that, isn't there? Well, there are. So, so is Lewis is Anna's son. He spent um, approximately six years with Anna in the royal palace, mm. where he became a contemporary of the future King Rama V. Right. And Rama V was instrumental in opening up the country to international and European influence. Hence, he became manager for the Borneo Company. He was the first manager. And okay. those, that's all part of the deep history of it the is, house. Yeah, right? it's a, a little bit of royal heritage it, there. Absolutely. And we've got two rather interesting cocktails here. Can you tell me about them? Um, yes. This, the, the one closest to yourself and on my left is called The Garden. And that's essentially a gin and tonic. It's Henderson's gin, Fentiman tonic water. It's got lemon dill in it, cucumber, and fresh herbs in it. You can sort of eat and drink at the same time. Oh, very good. And the other one is... This is Tom Yum Martini. When you smell it, it will... Can I try that one? That is yours, actually. Oh, it is mine. It okay, is. perfect. That is right. very I'm much yours. I'm going to have yours. the Tom Yum and Martini. Okay. It's right well, up my street, that yeah, one. Yeah, but that is a chili. So I won't yes. swallow that. We'll be. Well, let me, well cheers. Here's the uh, well, one, three, six, seven pillars, and it's huge success. Thank you very success. much. Yeah, cheers. That is an absolute winner. Oh, good. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, superb. Cheers. And what are you What are you going to be working on in the next 12 months? Well, back to, to food and beverage. Some of the things that we've started here and and it's becoming a little bit of a tradition. Um, I want to do more signature events. Right. Um, so in this bar, for instance, I've, I've started um, bringing in a couple of interesting people who've lived in Chiang Mai for a long time. And they, 
they're raconteurs. They they tell. They tell stories. They tell stories. Yeah. Yes. So we've done a couple of those. Um, we had a um, classical guitar concert here. Just actually um, in the bar. Itself. It, that one was actually in the dining okay, in the, room. In, yeah. Um, so we've done that, and um, I'm going to continue that type of event, and then. Um, on an afternoon, um, we, we're going to do some specialist afternoon teas. Um, so Halloween is coming up, and we have, we'll probably get, I would say, around 30 families. So we'll have about 60 or 70 people here. And this house will be perfect as a haunted house. And it looks a bit haunted. I was going to say, it looks a bit haunted, yeah, it doesn't does. it? So well, you've probably got a few I'll, ghosts I'll, I'll send there. you some photographs. Um, but down in the garden out there, we're going to have the, that's going to be the, the, the graveyard and the cemetery over there. We're going to have a few witches flying into oh the house God, and crashing really? and yeah, cats, you know, and, and witches on the lawn and things hanging out of the tree. Okay. And then we'll have storytelling in here. Oh, um, lovely. Yeah. So you mentioned tea. That's just, I mean, the, I noticed when we were traveling around um, yesterday in, in Chiang Mai, so much going on with tea and coffee, coffee. and cacao. And yes. It's like almost like the next big thing that's coming. Well, I think it's exciting for, for the North because the royal project started with, right. with um, yeah. King Rama the, the, the Ninth. Mm. And, you know, that was a, a very purposeful and thoughtful um, enterprise to, to replace. I mean, he, he was quite visionary. Mm. You know, you, you, look at, you look at governments throughout the world who suddenly cut off industries, whether it's coal or whether it's right. steel or what have you. And they, they don't have it replaced by anything. Yeah, it was an absolute replacement uh, of it there, so of here, what was going on before. Yeah, it was, it was growing of cocaine. Yeah. Um, so he, wanted, he knew that there would be hardship mm. if that was cut out. And he started the Royal Project to, to become an agricultural center. And, you know, initially it was lots of greens and herbs and what have you, which now I think Chiang Mai is doing quite well in, and the North is doing well, in that they are up valuing the product that they're growing right so to your point a profusion of tea and coffee growing yeah. and a lot of them organic and just last week i'd, I'd read about a place called skuga estate which mm. is growing cacao mm. and i had been a few weeks ago to nan and there they've got quite an active um uh, industry of right. growing cacao um, and they've got a place called the Chocolate Factory. So I went out to Skuga to have a look at it, and, you know, 10 out of 10. Well, you mentioned products. King Rama the Ninth, and he was almost ahead of his time with his sustainability yes. theories. Yeah. People in those days would say, well, Why? but now what? everybody is realizing that, that we have to have a sustainable element to everything we do. So. Uh, yes. And this is the story of uh, 137 Pillars as well, in a way, right? Well, well it is, really. And, and you know, I, um, being the age I am, I, I, I I have an appreciation for, for history and for yeah. architecture and for culture. Yeah. And, you know, that's why it's such a pleasure to live here. On that, I'm going to have one more bit of my oh, tom yum. Good for you. And, uh, and, and, and say goodbye. Okay, well, Cheers, thanks then. very much. It was lovely meeting you. And it's hopefully a, you'll be coming back soon. I, I sincerely hope so. Yes, please do. If it started again because I said good afternoon, right? Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, One more time. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that was very good. We're both as bad as each other. For the Uber River. <laughs> yeah, very good. Pillar Hotel. Pillars Hotel. Once I start getting it wrong, I get it wrong every single That's time. That's okay. I, I, this is what I do. This is me. Incarnate. This is spell. <laughs>